Less time on constant chronicle beheading. Despite being attacked by hobgoblins, the party procured plenty of wild meat for their band's first gig, which for a temple show had a decent-sized crowd and could be considered a success. Then they all enjoyed the Urgothoan after-party before murdering thirteen guests who made the mistake of sleeping over. And now, Constant Chronicle Bad Egg continues. You guys want to see if there's a... Horse armor? Horse armor. That might be a good expenditure today. I offer everybody a, a bump of focaine. Great, just do it. Because why not? Focaine. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> <laughs> so Rain's doing some focaine. What about uh, Lil' Niggy? Niggy's in. I'm going to <laughs> it's just like 11 in the morning. At least three of your allies there, Lilith, are about to get really talkative. They're going to start doing weird shit with their jaw. Frantically writing on a chalkboard. Yeah, Rain, Rain has a bunch of shit to write down. Rain's writing becomes even more illegible than usual. Horse armor, that sounds good. Yeah, we got all kinds of armor. Ranging from 75 gold up to 300 gold, depending on what kind of armor you like. Heavy. Heavy or heavy combat trained. Heavy combat trained. Funny that we're all looking to increase our horse's armor and not our own. Very I would funny. like to increase my own armor. <laughs> uh, once <laughs> I am able to, once like, I am proficient all armor with good. that heavier armor, I will buy some heavier armor. Mm-hmm. I can't actually like go much further with my armor. Most of my AC is now going to come from martial arts. It's like a helmet or a bracer. I just think, like, I feel like 18 is good, but 19 is like... So if you guys are willing to spend 300 per horse, we'll give your horses a plus 4 armor. Yep, works for me. 300 per horse or yep. 300 total? 300 per horse. I will yep. cover it for everyone. So 1,200 Yay. total. We'll buy your, your good friend Bit Vic buys you all armor for your horses. Your horses are now better protected. Add that to your horse's AC now. Say to everybody with a smile, this is why I get executive producer credits on the album. <laughs> <laughs> Rain gives you a solid thumbs up. I give uh, Rain a uh, very uh, powdery thumbs up. <laughs> Yeah, your horses all have armor now. They can have that sent to your stable, and it's held, the, you know, they're held into your names, delivered to the stable and uh, outfitted while you're away. I'm trying to find the uh, shops, and so there's three shops that might possibly contain magical items. You can try to go around to the biggest shops and talk to them and be like, hey, well, I'm the DL, what's up? We try to dip low and get some of that magic magic. Well, let's find us some potion. Yeah, you guys can roll knowledge local yeah. real quick and try and figure that out again. Since you've had some time pass and yeah. you've been here a little bit longer, maybe made new friends with your bands and stuff, you can be like, hey, guys from Sweet Nothings, where do you guys get stuff when you need it? One to one local. 18. 11. So Vic Von Claude, maybe you just like flash some money and that's why you get the best result. I got uh, a 19. Well, it sounds like Vic still has the best result. Uh, you guys can get pointed in the right direction of illegal goods. Maybe with that high of a roll, you'll be pointed to three shops in the northern district of town. There's a butcher, a baker, and a candlestick maker who deal in illegal goods. The amount of money you have, you could also deal in the more higher-up circles of magic item collectors, like antique collectors and dealers. The, the rich do have more access to magical weapons than the poor do. Out, outside the black market, you just have to get involved in those circles. Yeah, uh, I think you have to go to the, the bank first. Probably should go to the bank first. You guys know where the bank is, and you have been identified there. Most of you, a couple of you have IDs, uh, depending on where you were from originally. Otherwise, yeah, you're well known here, and you can be identified by the manager and such, and access your accounts as need be, as long as there's someone official here on, on duty. Which I believe right now, I rolled good enough that you guys have no problem accessing your accounts now if you need to. Have I, an account. I didn't get to do this last time, but can I use my Granaris ID for like? Where to use that? Yeah, as long as you have an account of some sort, sure. You can use your credentials to access any money that, that some patron of some sort from somewhere, some demon lord somewhere, is, is, or some of your ancestors, somehow your money is being trickled to, under your name to this account. So take advantage of it. Some money's coming from somewhere, some benefactor. So go ahead and withdraw money and say how much money you would like to withdraw. I dream to uh, withdraw two platinum pieces. Tuck it away somewhere, less likely to get robbed. I'll take a platinum out as well. Yeah, I'll take out uh, one platinum as well. Why don't you guys make your withdrawals in the bag? We're coming well-known customers here at this point. If I just need a thousand gold to spend, I probably spent a thousand gold from yesterday. Where would you like to go now? Which is the bank? You guys want to try to eat butcher, the maker, or the I would like to get baked. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> Can we go and try and murder some goblins at some point? Yes. I write. I'd so like to kill goblins. Rain holds a grudge and he writes that on his chalkboard, I assume. Yep. Well, we have to leave town to do that. And I am on board with that. 
Well, do you guys want to see if we can find some health potions for anything from one of these magic stores real quick? Yep. Boom, bing, boom. Then go kill goblins. Let's each get two potions per person. Well, go. Let's see if we can find yep. Yeah, do you guys want to check out the baker with the knowledge local? Me, four. Seventeen. Uh, uh, fourteen. It sounds like Lilith has put in the heavy work on this one. Several bakers in town, but Lilith is able to discern which one is the one which might have illegal goods. You can be taken to their shop, which looks just like a normal bakery, with normal baked goods, but with the right code words, the right questions, you guys can get what you need. So maybe a diplomacy to try to get what you need, I guess, once you're there. Natural 20. Yeah, you guys can acquire some potions. Yeah, give us the good stuff. They've currently got 20 potions in stock, 120 gold each. You can get 8 for 960. Is that my, is that my good math? Yep. Yeah, so yeah, 8 would put you right under that. You get 40 gold back and still be rocking with a bunch of cure lights. I get five. Five at 120 is what, 600? I cannot support these. <laughs> Don't worry, your friends bought them. I'm sure if you get in trouble, they'll either heal you or let you die because they're evil. So. Who knows? Is there anything else? Like armor or anything? Roll diplomacy to ask about anything else they might have. Hello, 21. That's uh, 24. So with that diplomacy check, you're able to find out the, some of the things they have. They don't have a whole lot besides the various potions. They do have an assisting glove for sale and a... Book of the Lore Master. Knowledge. Arcana probably is the one you want. 13. Uh, but I got a 19. So uh, Lilith can know even more than you. It's a small book that seems to have a random collection of words, phrases, and strange mnemonic aids. But it's a, a book that bards are known to use. You get a plus 5 bonus when taking a 10 or 20 on knowledge checks. It makes it a 15 or 25 on knowledge checks if they have this book. It's funny, we're in a band. No one's a fucking No bard. one's a bard. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, unless one of you guys are a bard. It is uh, 15,000 gold, so it's also probably more than you can... Oh, shit. Let's go kill stuff. Just to hold a yeah, high yeah, price. Yeah. yeah, you guys can go kill stuff. I mean, unless you want to kill people that live in town, you probably have to leave town to do that, but it's it's a thing you can do. Rat folk outside of town, there's some dangerous roads, there's a dangerous jungle, dangerous caves, the water. Well, we could buy, like, a, you know, shitty horse, and we could use it as bait to tempt goblins. I think that's a great idea. You guys want to spend 100 gold on a shitty horse? We should. Let's go pick up our horses, and we can ask all of the same time. Yeah, and maybe we should get some more folking too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once you start buying oh, yeah, folking, capital letters. you do it on the weekends, or you're the person that just does it all the time. That's what that's how you are. I think we found out what kind of person Vic Von Klon is. Buying China. Vic's like rubbing his teeth and like, hey, what if we get more like folking? Like, uh, he, he keeps talking about it, keeps bringing it up. It's kind of, by the time you guys are at the stable, it's kind of annoying how much, how many times he's brought up Fulcane. When you guys arrive at the stable, uh, it's going to cost you three gold per horse because your horses were kind of in rough condition. But they've taken care of your horses, bandaged any wounds, fed them, uh, let them get their rest. They've got at least eight hours of rest at this point. But it will be three gold per horse to get them back. So 12 gold total, or three gold each, however you want to handle getting your horses back. And then to buy a new horse, if you want to buy a bait horse, that's 100 gold. A bait pony is 75, a bait mule is about 60. Could we rally a bunch of, like, stupid, like, Adventurers to go with us too, just to serve as cannon fodder while we rip the shit out of the goblins. You can try, but a lot of people, without offering to pay people, they probably won't go. But if you have some money to throw in with an with a rousing speech, maybe. Goblins? You can go kill goblins. That's a thing. You know where they are now. Yeah, we, but there's like could... twenty of them in a group, and we want like to at least not all be shot to death in the first round. Good point. Good point. Are you okay running back to the temple then and calling Cersei? It's in town. You guys know where it's at. You have friends there. Go see Tim. Hey, Tim offers, to help you make uh, a call. Big offers Lola some. Okay, well, right there. <laughs> Whatever you guys want to do. <laughs> you guys do some bumps and go to the temple. So from here, you have the best chance of getting what you want from Cersei if you would like to ask for anything. Lil, do you have an official uh, ask from Cersei? Candy. <laughs> do you want more mercenaries? No, candy. From Cersei, thou shalt have three fighters. Three fighters will arrive in the temple. You'll use your very strong teleportation magic, and we'll save to use some of your mythic points. Just because this is outside of your territory, you're just doing it to make sure they get to the exact point you want them. Easy breezy. They have two new fighter allies if you need them, guys. So Tim can be like, this is Lilith. Lilith is your boss now. So Lilith, now you control them because you're the Kirkathorn representative. So you have two fighters under your control. Kill goblins now? Wanna get stupid adventurers too? Question mark. Yeah, we could get some fresh off the boat adventurers, make them right, to go okay. out with us. Find some tourists and tell them it's like a, an adventure, and maybe even like charge them money to come with you. Holy oh, shit, that's genius and evil. Let's do it. Use them as <laughs> use them as bait. Go inside. People can't get inside. Let's be like, hey guys. We'll get you inside. Come help with it. Well, at the east gate, mostly it's merchants that come through, and outside of that, everyone comes in through the ports, and they're allowed in through there. That's where probably the most like fresh meat comes in. So unless you want to trick some merchants, I'm just saying, like for twenty dudes, we're gonna need to soak, have them soak for at least a couple 
around. Do you guys want to go to the docks, or do you want to go to the East Gate and try to get merchants? I the ducks. Docks. docks, get some tourists. The ducks. You guys are like pretending to be a tourist group, a tourist company. These people don't know what they're getting themselves into. Is basically the idea, right? Well, yes. Maybe roll me someone who's ever selling this needs to roll me a bluff check to convince tourists to come along with you. I guess is what I need if, if we're just lying to get tourists to come be fodder. Vic rolled at twenty six. Listen, this is going to be the best tour you've ever seen. We're going to go to ancient ruins, sighting vistas. I can see great fl native flora and fauna, and uh, all sorts of other great attractions. So you have uh, one person that comes along that's very excited, and two people that are like sort of cautious but excited to come along. There's a, a cautious couple and an excited loner that will join your group from the boats. Right. You guys don't have uniforms or anything official. Like you don't seem to be a booth. So for a group of like ragtag adventurers with like wounds and stuff, you at least convince three people to come along. Seems like a bunch of uh, targets. Adventuring new adventuring yeah, so Vic, if you want to pretend to be the leader of this tour group, you know, you can make it look like you're leading a large group. As you guys are heading through town, you're stopped by a guard, an officer, who asks to see your, your tour leading license, because it's obvious you're leading a group through town. So unless you want to bluff your way out of this, or bribe your way out of it, or produce some sort of forged license. No, you're mistaken, sorry. Bluff. <laughs> 25. With that air of authority, Vic somehow pulls that off. Uh, <laughs> not a tour group. Just a bunch of people walking around together. Uh, you guys are able to exit the city all together uh, through the East Gate with your mercenaries and your tourists. You head north. Uh, you guys are on foot this time instead of with horse, so it takes a little bit longer to get towards the jungle. Um, so it's a much longer trip. You'll be pretty fatigued by the time you get there. You've been walking for a long time. It's definitely late in the day by the time you reach the edge of the jungle in the mountains where you guys saw activity before. On the walk here, maybe right now, I need another bluff check from you, Vic, to like have sort of been BSing all the, the whole way here to get people to like make sure they're still following you and thinking this is a real tour of some sort. Yeah, that sounds really great. You're lying really well about everything. This is where Jim Darling's great great grandparents. It's total BS. Slim the Darling. Their first album, The Real Slim Shady. But you guys will reach the edge of the jungle and the mountains with these tourists safely uh, without perturbation. But now that you're here, you know you're in the area where you saw the goblins before. You know before it took them a while to amass and attack you. So you sort of reach this area where they were. Unless you guys want to go into the caves or into the jungle. You're on the beach now. And things are quiet, but this was the area where you were attacked before. So you think if you hang out here long enough, you might attract attention again. I feel like we should hunt them down first. Before they can amass, right? I'm gonna write that down. Hunt so first. Leave the mules out where they can see them. That way, they come to get them. We kill them when they come to get the mules, or do you want to put the mule like away from you, like closer to the forest? Yeah. Do we want to put the mules in the forest and then go in the cave, or like the options? What would work best? I mean, that could be a raw roll to find out. Local might be the best, I guess. If I off the top of my head. Eighteen. Natural one. Natural twenty, baby. Damn, alright. 17. So Rain and Lilith will know a little bit, but Vic will know the most. You'll all know that goblins, or hobgoblins especially, which are a larger form of goblin, are very territorial, very warlike. Probably better organized than most goblin tribes are. They tend to have more human-like characteristics than normal goblins. Definitely better organized. They have soldiers, they have armies, they have slaves. Definitely a formidable foe if you walk into their territory. You guys aren't sure if they're from the jungle or the cave, so going into either one unprepared might be unwise. Letting the mule draw them out will probably work, but just like before, they seem to amass over a period of time, and they would probably try to have appropriate numbers to deal with your group. So if you give them time, they're just going to get a big enough group to fight the large number of you. So whoever suggested maybe attacking them first was not a, that's not a bad suggestion I guess, is what you'll gather from the, your rules now. Is there a way we could do like tracking? Survival, survival would help you do a tracking to yeah, survival would give you guys more clues. Natural 20, 22. Natural 20 for rain. Rain can do follow the tracks. It's hard because a lot of them were up in the, were up in the trees especially the, the monkey goblin was firing at you who was a, obviously a slave of the hobgoblins. The hobgoblin tracks were on the ground nearby. They seem to lead to the caves. So How do you guys maybe, feel? Right. One of the Mules up by the caves to sit as a distraction and then go down to the woods and kill the goblins that are there. Well, I think they're in the cave. Like, I, I think I, in the in in the caves, I write. Yeah. He's not even going to try to write at Vic. He's just going to point at Vic and be like, and then raise his hands up like, what do you think? Uh, I think it is time to mm, get really high. You mean go up in the mountains or do more for cocaine? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> both? Yes, both. The high ground away from these goblins. Plus, I, I'm already higher than the goblins. Really yeah, burn through your supply. Yeah, I, uh, I pass it to uh, 
all of my friends and not offer it to uh, any of our patsies. Right, but the, yeah. the main crew, even though it wants a bump before you guys, uh, I guess, cl try to climb some mountains. You guys want to stealth around to not draw attention to yourself while you're climbing? That might require leaving the mule behind and convincing with a diplomacy your tourists to shut up. Unless you also leave them behind with the mule or something. Could we draw them out of the early, out of the cave? All right. Sending a tourist to the <laughs> Definitely take a diplomacy or bluff to, to talk a tourist to go into a cave alone. There's a stalactite there. <laughs> Look at the game of wonders. Is that Jim Darling I hear in there? <laughs> no, that'll work. I swear it sounds like Jim Darling is singing in there. Yeah, send in a tourist. Sound good? Fine with me. So who wants to diplomacy or bluff a tourist? Probably I'm best if just town. one of you do it. That way there's not a chance anyone screws it up. So. Fuck in town uh, with a 21 diplomacy. Listen, this is uh, the path up into the best mountains here on the island where all the best uh, jungle music's made. You know, jungle's really massive right now. It's way better than house music. I think the two tourists are interested, but the, well, even with that, they feel like maybe, like, since they're tourists, a guide, maybe one of you should go with them to show them around. Maybe even you, Vic, since you're the one that's been, like, the guidiest of guides so far. Let's send our trusty mules. Yeah, yeah, our mule knows the way. It's like a sherpa thing. Like, oh, just hop on the mule. The mule does all the work. If we go in, we'll take turns. Everyone takes the mule up there. Now, this isn't a trained mule, so the mule might also not want to follow along with this. So if you're trying to pull this mule trick, someone has to roll a successful handle animal to trick a mule to walking towards the caves with some tourists on its back under the lie that we're going to take turns not doing natural it. natural 20. It's nice thing to bluff on top of that to convince them to go. My Luckily, Rain's good with animals. Who's good at lying to tourists? I got a modified 20. These two tourists are dumb as fuck and going along with it. They hop on this mule, rain smacks its ass, and it rides towards the caves. Up a steady slope over some rocks, some hilly area, into a dark cavern. When it enters the cavern, you guys hear the loud noise of monkey goblin shrieks and hobgoblin grunts. How so, many? Like a lot of them? Yeah, a lot, a lot of them. More than 20 for sure. Like a, a large crowd. Um, that was a mistake. Well, it, it, they're going to pre be preoccupied with them, not us. That noise continues for about two minutes, then stops, and nothing comes back out of the cavern. <laughs> Oh, that was great. I guess we could just hunt in the woods for random stuff. We don't need to hunt necessarily hobgoblins. You guys want to head into the jungle and see what's in there to fuck around with? Yeah, there's too many hobgoblins. Let's leave another mule right there so if they start coming towards us, they have something to eat. Maybe we'll hear it when they attack it. No, why not? And you guys wander off away from the mule. At least, like, delay anything from happening. The mule will bray to warn you, hopefully. If you want to go any further into the jungle, there's a river to cross near the mountains. How would you guys like to cross the river? On foot? Just, just walk through it? Just to see if you guys can swim? Checks it across? I was swimming. Probably 25, 30 feet across. Well, I have something awesome called a grappling head. So if anyone's good at swimming and can get a rope across, so we now, can kind of... Now, behind you is a large clump of trees, and ahead of you is more mountains and rocks and stuff. If you want to try and, you know, lasso arm a grappling hook into the mountains, you can try. Uh, the thing with the grappling hook, I think you can only throw it 15, 30 feet without a launcher of some sort, though. Yeah, I don't think... So you might like you might get like just across the river if you you need like your maximum throwing length would be the hard part. So you know might save you from getting washed downstream. Not a bad idea to at least anchor yourself to the ground across the river, but I wouldn't be able to get you safely across without getting in the water. I'll throw it across so we can at least use it to make it slightly catch on to if something. Yeah, you know, I mean no one no one gets washed away. There's a safety rope. Show me everyone roll me swim checks just so you know as long as no one totally fucks up, which is the fun of rolls. Eighteen modified twenty. I got a six. Oh, well. Back. Ignatius is a little gnome guy, and he's like, he got like six feet across the river, he's like, uh-oh. So as much as you guys are like, we're able to get right across, you can see Ignatius is just struggling. Get on my back. I would like that. that Maybe roll me a CMB to grab onto him there, Ignatius. Can I use the CMB? Yes, you can both roll a CMB. I got an eight. Does that beat your CMD? No, uh, it does not beat my CMD. But well, I now you can roll five. against his and just try and grab him, though. That's going to be easy. 25 beat your CMD, Iggy? So yeah. You try to grab Rain and you can, but Rain does grab you. And he can help pull you to the other side of the shore. Where you like a backpack. <laughs> if everyone rolls successfully, you guys can make it across the river to the, to the bigger jungle mountain area. You guys are now north of where you crashed your barge before. So you're closer to the large jungle, closer to the large mountains. You're now in the, the wildest part of Norland. You guys are up in the shit now. You guys heading up into more mountains or more jungle? Uh, I think the mountains might be a little more deadly than. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Plus, climb checks, cold, avalanche, all the things that come with mountains. You guys want to wander into the jungle? Yeah, yes, well, please. can we track, actively track or hunt? With a survival check, you can actively track or hunt something. 20 not natural. Yeah. yeah, you can track 
animals in this area, and even hear the thundering footsteps of animals nearby if you want to walk towards it. Probably not the thundering the footsteps of the thunderlord. This will probably kick our ass. And you see, like, broken twigs and stuff. You want to look for, like, smaller animals? You want to look for, like, a watering hole? Or, like, a bear, or, like, an owl bear, or... Knowledge nature. Well, yeah. anyone want to do better? I got a... Iggy sees you, like, looking around, like, touching leaves and stuff, looking for clues. Iggy, you will, uh, pick up primate traits and lizard traits uh, all around you, so you, you you can discern if you want to track a large primate or an even larger lizard. Do you think we could take a thunder lizard? I don't know a lot about them. Oh, nature on the... At level one? On? Hell no. <laughs> yeah, you can roll. Uh, so another modified... You know the, the large lizards here are bigger than apes are. You know how large apes are. They're bigger than you. You're a tiny guy. But you've got a pretty good crew with you, so I mean, I don't know. Maybe you could take a big lizard. Maybe you could t- be easier to take out apes than lizards. This is what you gauge, but you don't you don't, you don't, don't think that it's impossible to take out a thunder lizard. We got fighters. I think you would know it would make a better story to kill a thunder lizard than an ape. You guys want to go, I, I feel, I'm feeling pretty good about this. I would like to kill some big ape. Big lizard I in your backyard? I want to do a ape, but I mean, I won't stop you. Great, let's do it. Give me a lot of focaine and I can do yeah. it. All right, let's go. Those thunder lizard trails. I'm, I'm in. Someone roll me a survival check to do some thunder lizard tracking. I'll give it my all. I've been rolling really well with survival. With a 19 rain, you will spot tracks, but you will also spot tracks in a familiar pattern. You'll come to a clearing where there's a whole lot of dinosaur tracks, and they seem to be going in a long oblong track shape, cutting a path through the woods as if they were on some sort of thunder lizard racetrack. Right. What? I, I write thunder lizard race? Roll perception check, yes, everybody. Please. Five. <laughs> Nineteen. To everyone besides Rain, that, unless someone else rolled high. For everyone else, it sounds like thunder in the distance. But Rain, you know that's like growing up around horse racetracks. You know that's the thunder of footsteps coming this way. You're able to, uh, d- to discern that it's not thunder. Let's get out of the way. Right. Fast as you can, I'm sure. So you guys uh, jump off the Thunder Lizard racetrack as the Thunder Lizards approach and storm past you, thundering past. Uh, roll perception check as the Storm Lizards thunder past you guys. 19. 17. 15 plus. 7. Sounds like everyone except Vic will notice that the dinosaurs, the Thunder Lizards, have riders on their back. Monkey-like humanoids riding them around this Thunder Lizard track. Um, they storm through the mud and kick up dirt back at you guys, so you guys get kind of covered in their dust as they storm past you. Vic turns to Lilith and says, Lilith, don't those look like good eating? I bet they would taste mighty fine over uh, a spit over a fire, for sure. I would like to offer everybody my drugs and say, let's go to dinosaur hunt. Blowing through this cocaine supply, I feel like. You're turning a three-day supply into a one-day supply, which is classic with cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> I bought three days worth of cocaine, let's do it all right now. Anyone yeah. partake Besides Vic, I guess. I guess I have to know, just so I know who's all hopped up on Coke. Down flat. Or, or fantasy oh, Coke. Oh, yeah, uh, Rain, yes, has a clue to worship her enthusiastically. Uh, yeah. Takes a bump of cocaine. You guys uh, embrace the weird as dinosaurs charge by. They run past you, like 120 feet past you. They just blew past you. You guys peer through jungle brush. It's just kind of where, like, grass has been parted. So, like, apparently these things have run through here more than once, but not enough to create a road or a path yet. Just enough to sort of leave the trappings of things pass through here. Pass through really fast, and then they kind of disappear in the brush ahead of you. So to see them again, you have to chase after them or some other thing. But they blew past you really fast. At least seven bipedal dinosaurs up on two feet. Short, you know, like fast dinosaurs. All of the same style of dinosaur, not a mixture. Fast running, short armed, big head. Yeah. I have a list in front of me. Uh, Brontosaurus. Skip the ones that sound nothing like what I'm describing. <laughs> more similar to a T Rex build or a Velociraptor build. Okay. Fast. That's more like leg power type of whatever. You know, this might be dinosaurs that only exist in this world, so maybe there's not even a name for it. Like, they obviously chose these dinosaurs for speed. Clearly, um, they are the NASCAR Raptor. Uh, sponsorships all up their side. They definitely were painted when they ran by. And maybe they do have some sort of Venaran markings of sponsorship. The Mountain Dew one just blew past you. <clears throat> so would you guys maybe be interested in following this game trail to see if we can find the end of this race and see what's going down? Maybe we can kill some lizards or put some bets on the next race? They're pretty large, so it wouldn't even take a very high survival to follow their trail if that's what you wish to do. Like, they're moving much faster, so you might not be able to keep up. Oh, we but don't you need can, to keep up. We just but you can follow the course, see where it goes. Yeah, so. we want to see the, the finish line. Survival? It's got to end up somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah uh, Ray enthusiastically lips, licks his lips at the thought of eating one. Uh, Thirteen. One. Well, Strong start. Even, even less your thing. <laughs> Sixteen. 
<laughs> like, I don't know, all this grass looks high to me. I rolled, uh, I rolled a three. Not much help. Yeah, natural three. You can follow them, like, you see them running through it uh, right in front of you, so you can follow them a short distance, then after that it gets more difficult to tell. Like, maybe they break apart ahead. This course is obviously not a built course, it's an improvised course. Uh, so maybe it just gets more difficult, like, a hundred yards ahead. You're not sure if you're following it anymore or not. Oh, did you hear me? I said 16. Still not great. Better than everybody else. Yep. Rain, right. probably because of your upbringing and your senses the trees become more separated so it's harder to find broken limbs and such somehow it gets more confusing a little bit farther ahead what are the chances that we can catch those spiders still? are they too far gone uh they left the jungle but since they were assigned by the temple yeah probably going back to the jungle. yeah they, they could they probably went back to the temple they're probably you know they're being paid at least for mm-hmm. the time being or, or, or commanded but for the time being they either left the jungle and just went outside the jungle to wait for you, or if they fled back to the city, they probably went back to the temple to see if you returned. Cool. And if you don't return, they're free of duty, and if you do return, then maybe they'll return to their service. Well, like, they, they probably aren't too far away. Like, they, haven't, they haven't had much time to flee. And, uh, Vix, once this is fixed, forth in the air, it says, Tally horse! So we head down the monkey track further. At least Vic does. Vic's going that way. Yeah, we're following yeah. him. I'll, I'll follow Rain. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna follow him. At this point, like I said, it's kind of splits into like four separate little. Maybe like I said, maybe they like veered off or avoiding different stuff. Or maybe it's like it's an improvised track. It's not a real road. So I guess um, you have four paths to choose from. You can pick any one. Which one smells highly of dinosaur? Perception like, check. You no, know, fuck it. I mean, we're, they're all going to the same place anyway. Because rain is pausing to smell. You guys can also do survival. That's better than your perception. Yeah, Seventeen. Oh, shit. I, looked at, I rolled a natural six on perception. 17 and 18 over here. Right, Iggy and uh, Lilith are doing the best it sounds like right now. I can follow one of these paths. Like, you know, obviously dinosaurs still charge through here. There are broken leaves. There's footprints. There are signs of things happening in, all, you know, all four of these paths. You guys can pick one of them. I mean, they're all going to the same place, right? Yeah, yeah, well, uh, theoretically, right? I rolled high enough that uh, up ahead, the paths sort of, like, reconvene. They merge again. But there is a water hazard to cross. So you guys need to pass. It's just a small stream. It's not crazy. It's just a little wet. I think the ones that will mostly bother is probably Ignatius because you're short. So maybe Ignatius, give me a swim or somebody carry Ignatius, I guess would be the... Can I try to acro? You can try to acro if you want to try and jump over it. It's not very big, so maybe you can jump over it. Tarzan, maybe grab a... Uh, modify 20. Oh, that, I think. Ignatius is able to make it over to themselves without any of your own help. You can do like the Mario jump. You jump and then like in the air you jump a second time. Yeah. Somehow you jump off of nothing. So yeah, Ignatius makes it across the stream. The rest of you, I think, are tall enough to make it. It's just like fast rushing water past your knees. Uh, so nothing you can't handle. Makes the scent harder to track once you cross, but there are still footprints and, and broken leaves. And like I said, it seems like the paths have reconverged. So it's one unified path again, easier to follow. But I still need a survival to do that, but it'll be lower to succeed. Only seven. I sucked. I got an 18 perception. Ignatius, once again, coming through. Maybe because you're so close to the ground. <laughs> yeah. you, you see the footprints up yeah. close. You see the droppings. Ignatius will lead you guys forward. Uh, you guys can continue if you just follow. It becomes obvious like where they're running. I don't make you guys keep rolling forever to do it. We can follow what we're doing right now. But it will take hours to, it's a large trek, because they're dinosaurs and they run fast, and it's a very long trek. So if you guys are willing to trek several hours into the jungle, we can do that. But I'll, roll, I'll be rolling to see if something happens. Do you guys wish to go further into the jungle? I guess is the question now. No. You don't? I don't know. I'm a little scared. There's some hesitancy from some of the group who are going scared. further. Okay. You, got, you, you probably hear sounds all around you. Okay. Wild uh, animals, like stuff like that. How, how much cocaine do I have? <laughs> like guy decision. I mean, yeah, I feel like you bought a three day supply and have probably used two days worth of it, so maybe like. And that's if you don't blow through it. If you just like use it at the normal yeah, speed. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I probably wouldn't be afraid right now, actually. Like, Tell me, horse! Uh, <laughs> I'm going to move, uh, push forward. Um, yeah, you guys, you guys trek forward, and, and because I'll let you guys continue at the same pace of following these trails, I will now roll percentage to see if there's dangers. I rolled low the first time, thirty percent. So it's just you know, it's a bumpy road. There's, it's a jungle. There's mosquitoes. There's weird noises. There's obviously, things all around you. The brush is high, even the largest of mo- among you feel small, and the smallest among you feel extra small. And it's I'm wet, and it's sticky, and it's hot, humid. I rolled 30 the second time, same thing, so it's a very similar experience. I'm gonna roll one more time, and then I'll let you stumble upon 
Venaran territory. At this point in time, you guys will have been traveling for three hours after this roll, and as long as I don't roll anything bad happening... I rolled 30 again, three times in a row! Uh, you guys wow. are the luckiest evil bitches ever! <laughs> you guys are able to reach a Venaran settlement, whether you know it or not. Tree houses and stuff. Dinosaurs, like, tied up and stuff now. Like, signs of civilization. The race has stopped. They were probably done three hours ago. Not just those racing kind, but other kinds as well. But housing are around them, like they're kept by certain Renarins, like they're prized. And many of them are painted with natural dyes from the jungle. You'll see like patterns and stuff on them. They are Does this marked. Seem, like familiar from Barksdale to be treat them like that. You might recognize the the culture of like animal yeah. rearing and like animal, you know, like these people obviously rear these animals and are breeding them for some purpose. That's, I think that might be obvious to you as a as someone from where you come from, from Barksdale, for sure. Yeah. So if you guys go any further, you'll be entering their territory and having to deal with these monkey people one way or another. Area the size of a small town. Uh, perception checks? If you want to g- gain any more... To house? see, like, if we could find, like, the biggest treehouse, something yeah, that looks that's kind of like a temple or Yeah, letting me know what you're looking yeah. for, and it will help me know uh, yeah. what to... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, would you prefer knowledge religion, so I'm kind of looking for a temple? I think one's fine, but that, that might help you in a different way. Like, looking for or, things... I'd like to know what their religion is. That's a better, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess perception first to find the biggest place. Yeah, 15 on religion. Not Rugathelon, obviously. No. But they seem to be see like what I'm with. They see, it seems to be more competitive. One of the like a, probably a religion you don't like. Not a party religion, more of a discipline religion. You see like the animals are marked. Their houses are very orderly and clean, and you Fun. don't see signs of death or anything around. You don't sense getting closer. Like later on, once more things happen, you might be able to roll again. Do knowledge nature. I want to know if these guys are or Venarans are normally from. That is a twenty-four. Well, Venarans aren't monkeys. They're monkey people, and so this yeah. might tell you more about the nature in the region. You might look at, the, I mean, based on your nature, you might look at their tree houses and say, those are obviously not, it's not like they grew these houses, these are, they mm-hmm. built these, you might say, you might be smart to be like, these monkey people aren't monkeys, they are monkey people, they're mm-hmm. smart to have a culture. Monkey. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, the nature, nature might let you know more about the dinosaurs if you want to know more of the yeah, dinosaurs, too. Yeah, Yeah. Definitely trained as pets. Probably takes a lot to feed them or take care of them, so that, that means that they probably invest a lot in caring for these creatures. Also, with that high of a nature role, I might say that you know the kind of the reptilian nature of these creatures, they probably have to raise them from birth and like have them implant on you or mm-hmm. so you, you might know immediately if you if you guys walk up to these things they might be hostile to you. But they're really probably protective of, of the people yeah, that love it. Yeah, yeah. You would know that. Cool. A uh, perception check just to see what he originally said over talking about which is the, like obviously the cheese house or whatever. Yeah, you can try to look for the largest structure if that's how they do things here. Who knows if that's their culture. But yeah, you can look for many of the tree houses seem similar in size and make. No one seems more important than the other. Um, some houses have more. Some houses have more like dinosaurs parked underneath them. If you want, if you were to guess, you might guess like the house with more dinosaurs underneath is a more powerful house because they have more trained dinos. I would you, like to roll a perception check for bananas. Of course. I got a natural five. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you were just going off your knowledge. Like, you probably heard, like, something really racist from one of your great-grandparents about Venarans. Them Venarans love bananas! And you're, like, looking for a banana. You don't see any, but you're, you're you know, who knows if your racist instinct would have been good or bad anyway. Uh, I, uh, I turned to Jean Guy. <laughs> my, my monkey familiar. Monkey Familiar loves mo- loves bananas, so, you know, I-, I see where you're drawing the connection from. I would like to send him on a banana hunt. <laughs> Just banana hunt, or do you want him to get closer and inspect? Because you feel like, because he's a monkey and this is a jungle, he might be able to get closer than everyone else. You definitely think your monkey can move around like it's just a... Especially if you remove its clothes. I know sometimes you dress it. If you I ma- do, I do dress If you it. nakeify, naked... If you naked up your monkey, make it nude... I, uh, oh, the Make it more incognito, I, I it can wander around. Junkie. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll just throw Jonky like an exploratory vibe in his brain. Yeah, you can give him vibes because of your connection as a sorcerer. Monkey in form, but demon in nature if you're a sorcerer. So, uh, you know, he can't talk Not through yet. telepathy, but yeah. you Not can. Yet. He can give you feelings, and he can't express stuff through his face and other things. Shang-Gi would like to go and scout. I've also put out the banana vibe to him. <laughs> so he's hunting for bananas and scouting. You can make him roll two perception checks, one for bananas, one for scouting if you want. And you can make the lower one bananas. He rolled a 19 fine bananas. Nope. And uh, then he rolled an 18, just yeah. Okay, so both pretty good. I'll uh, roll percentage on bananas. Down. Vic does not pay attention to his surroundings. 
small amount of bananas and other fruit, and like he climbs up some trees, peeks into some huts. He could, if he was to try to, if he wants to roll a stealth, he could possibly sneak in and steal some. But he sees fruit of different varieties in these huts for sure. And the second roll, yeah, it was eighteen to, to just scout around. And scout around, get a vibe. There's nothing there to shock him. It looks like pretty plain dwellings, maybe you know, even pedestrian uh, for your concern. But it, nothing special. Nothing sticks out to the monkey other than these are obviously. A human-like, a humanoid creature. Even if monkey-shaped, they've built structures and have a society. I, I think uh, he's probably more interested in the fruit. It's all mine, because where, where there's fruit, that means there's wine. It can be, theoretically. Banana wine. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Correctamundo. Uh, we no, have 99 right. bananas, guys. <laughs> oh, God. A 99 bananas adventure. Oh. I want to congratulate our newest sponsor, 99 bananas. <laughs> They would probably have to either climb back down to you or signal to you to, to you know, communicate this information. You could also have a, a feeling, a vibe, so you can have an yeah. emotional response, but to, yeah, no, to get actual clear information, they would do something else. He can climb just fine. I mean, he's got climb speed. And unless he's doing something to draw attention to himself, like I said, I don't think he's going to get... He, he's a monkey, so I'm not paying any special attention to it if I'm a Venaran. That's a creature that exists in this area, and it's not weird. As long as you don't do anything to draw attention to yourself, you can do all this. Either stay up there and try to hand signal yourself, or come back to yourself. Come back to Vic and, you yeah, know... Yeah, no, no, John, you'll go back to Vic and, like, jab right up. Me, 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 me. And you'll, you know, re get from that what you can. It's not intelligible yeah. yet, but you can get a uh, vibe yeah, I and... I everybody else that says, He says he found bananas! <laughs> Yeah. He's doing the food, the food squeak. So yeah, yeah, if you guys want to go into town for it's bananas, you know that's there. Vic says, where there are bananas, there is banana wine. 99 of them. <laughs> so you guys want to approach this small town? Yeah. I say risk we, being seen? I say we walk in. Yeah. Yeah, why not? I would like to roll up. Roll for initiative. Oh. All kinds of noise comes from the trees when you guys enter the vicinity. Well, yeah. 20. And natural 20, it's 25. I got an 11. 11. So above Iggy, though, still. First to himself as goon. But Rain, yeah, a... you were the first one to walk in, and you before, you probably, like, stepped in before the noise started. So the noise doesn't start on your turn. Like, right after your turn is, like, when the noise erupts. I so, see hostile intent in their eyes. You probably don't see anyone, because you're first. You don't see anyone. You probably, Like I said, the noise probably erupts right after you do something. You get to be the one that does something that probably sets off the noise. So whatever you're doing is probably what alerts the whole group to the fact that you're oh. here. But the noise does start. This is all the same six seconds. This is all happening right now. It's just you yeah. get to do the first thing. This is obviously not going to be. This is going to be a hostile encounter, um, and there's a whole entire village of them. I'm going to point towards the forest and like urgently point towards the forest, and then I'm going to like actually, away from the village. Yeah, let's get the fuck out of here. Or, so no. <laughs> maybe you're really bad at doing hand signals, but if you guys want to roll linguistics to interpret them, maybe you'll be better at interpreting than Rain is at doing hand signals. Maybe just his panicked nature will, will give it away. Because he rolls so low, you have to roll 16 or higher to I get it. 16. So Lilith gets it. If you're lower uh, than 16, you don't get it. 21. You get it. Yeah. Uh, Two. Iggy, you don't get it. You don't. Uh, uh, I'm going to uh, then move behind cover. Uh, you know, completely full cover here. Like, hide behind, you want to, like, back up behind a tree or a bush, like, I'm not with this group? Well, no, no, more it's, like, more you want to, like, like, like Homer Simpson, you want to back into a bush? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get behind, like, full cover behind the tree. So, uh, stealth roll to, to, that'll be the end of your turn, I assume, if you're a stealth roll, if you're just trying to hide. I understand you want to call it taking cover and not hiding, because hiding seems cowardly. Taking cover seems tactical and cool, uh, but it's the same thing. You're, yeah, stealth roll to take cover. I want them to know that I'm there. I don't want to... But you don't want to get hit by an arrow or something. Yeah. Yeah. You're still, like so I said, you're still going to duck behind a tree. Play. It's still a stealth roll. It's accomplished the same play. thing. What was it? Oh, 20. Oh, yeah, you hide real good. You're good at blending in. So all that means is that Rain will not get attacked this first turn. Although probably everyone else is because now it's the Venaran's turn. And they see the rest of you because you've drawn attention to yourselves. I'm only going to attack each of you once because I'm a polite DM. But be aware... This is a village, so there's probably like 200 or so Venarans here that have the ability to attack you. And not to mention the dinosaurs that could attack you and other things that could go wrong. But immediately, uh, traps start getting set off, arrows start getting fired, things like that. But here we go, Vic. I rolled a 13 versus your AC, Vic. That is a miss, monsieur. So an arrow passes somewhere near you but does not hit you. Lilith? Oh, I rolled even lower. I rolled a 5. Miss. Yeah, big... Probably doesn't come anywhere. You see an arrow, but it's like lands. Yeah. Yards. 20 or so yards in front of you, but it's coming your direction. You guys, like I said, are probably going to be as far on the outskirts as you could be before you got noticed, so you guys are probably right at the edge of their range at this point. Ignatius. Oh, I rolled a 2 again, so 5. Whew. Same as 
uh, Lilith arrow probably about the same distance ahead of both of you. You did just see Rain hide, and can probably take a hint. And now that I've done that, like I said, I was only going to roll once for each of them this turn. It'll probably increase every turn now that you've drawn attention to yourselves. So be aware of that. I'll probably, uh, because I'm a nice game, increase. I'll do two next time. Three the turn after that, until I hit 250. So if you guys stay through <laughs> or resolve the situation. Vic Von Claude, it's now your turn in the rotation. Roll a diplomacy check as I grab uh, out my uh, satchel full of money and stew a bunch of gold I'm gonna coins. Shake some gold coins around and see if they recognize no, the sound. I, no, I grab a handful. I'm gonna throw and them. them. <laughs> Toss some gold into the air. Let it shimmer. I, I would like to roll. Make it rain. Cap, uh, to determine what uh, vintage of coin has just been screwing up about. You're kind of far away though, so you have to roll really high to get that. Because you're uh, up in a treehouse in a cage. 14. You can make out that it's gold, which might be enough for you, but you can't make out the markings on it without getting closer. So maybe in the start, in the that's moonlight, it reflects some light reflected off it. It's definitely gold getting thrown up. Or some that's something that looks like gold. Something that glitters. Not all that glitters is gold, but... Uh, I rolled a 22 diplomacy as well. Influence my mood, but no one replies verbally yet. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to walk out, set my axe on the ground, rolling a bluff, and I'll say, Hold your fire. We are uh, wealthy entrepreneurs from the city, and we saw your lovely racing beast pass by us in the forest and uh, the jungle, and we wish to inquire about purchasing them, one, or uh, learning more about your operation. So bluff first if you're lying, and then diplomacy to see how nice you're being. Bluff is 17. Whoa. Whatever you're saying is convincing. Well, as a natural one. Even though you feel like your lie is good, you feel like you're being good, you've dealt with many of these situations. Placating people is something you do as someone that works for the Overcoming Temple. Everyone to go off and pisses people Why? off. These Vinarns don't seem to understand you. I don't even and they know what continue, languages I speak. They continue to fire. Well, that's one of those Vinarns, which I doubt. Nope. That's, yeah. a, that's a pretty rare language. Yeah. Yeah. It's a isolated to just tribes of Venarans, so... I uh, made a gesture of laying my axe down, at least. Yeah, that, so that, that was probably the part that translated, was laying down your weapon. Well, they, you know, respond in shrieks and howls like monkeys, and are still firing upon you. So, you probably have exposed yourself a little more. Sure. So you put yourself in a little more danger, so you might draw extra fire next round. I was try, trying to, uh, to make, make a move there. Goon! You're in a cage up in a treehouse, but it is your turn, technically. You roll escape artist to try to get out if you wanted to. It's your life. Uh, I would like to roll escape artist to get out. I'm down with that. Maybe you've got skills. I don't know. Maybe there's been, like, biding your time up here, and now it seems like a good time. There's a distraction. They're firing at everyone else. It's a great time to get I out of here. Non-natural 20. That's still high enough to get out. These cages are, like, you know, made of bamboo and, you know, like, a twine and stuff, so it's pretty easy to get out of. You're a smart guy. If you want to use this moment of distraction to break out, you definitely can. Yeah. All right, you get out of your cage. You do have some allies nearby. Um, it would take more than one turn to break all of them out, but right now at least you are free. It would take one turn per to get them all out, but right now you are free. You're in front of your cage if you want to be. What do I see? Do I, uh... You're high up in the air. You're probably at least 80 foot up in a treehouse, maybe more. It could be 80 uh... to 120 feet up. Ewok-style treehouses, like this, you know. Circular porches around structures surrounding a tree, and there are, like, vines and bridges connecting them, you know. There are ways to get around up there, but getting up or down would, you know, be a climb check, or it might be acrobatics, get from one place to another. But otherwise, you know, you're, you're up in the trees, looking down at the, the group that's just arrived. Some of them are harder to see, especially Rain, because he's hiding. You can see Lilith, sort of a white mohawk. I would like to automatically fail a fly check, because I do not have wings. So you want to fall. <laughs> you're just going to plummet downward. At 120 feet, that's going to be 12d6 of damage unless you roll a reflex save to half it. I would like to roll a reflex save. Yeah, I, I would assume so. Or else 12d6 sounds like a lot at level 1. I got a natural 20. I'll roll what that is. That's still going to be a lot of damage. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Because it's a 120 foot fall, it's going to take more than one round. So you guys will have rounds to slow this down. So I'll roll the full damage now, don't take it yet. It's 26 damage, and I feel like level 1, that's a lot of damage. Does that kill you? It puts me into a uh, negative hit point. It doesn't take you past your negative con total? No, it does not. Okay, that, that still puts some pressure on you guys if you want to get this guy out of here without having to carry him. You know, if you care or at all. But if nothing else... You won't be dead from this fall, just very injured. After Goon comes Iggy. I mean, roll perception check, but yeah. you'll probably see this. It's not hard to see a little tiny lizard man fall out of a tree. Uh, uh, right. uh, not great, but high, high enough to see this. Like, yeah. Arrows being fired, you witness everything. Without it's yeah. higher than normal, so you see everything's going on, and you see this guy like 9-11 style, Twin Towers, guy, there's a guy <laughs> falling out of this tree. I know, well... <laughs> 
Sorry, guys. It's only been 20 years. A guy falls from a high height. Someone that's obviously not a monkey person. Yeah. Little, a little short person like you. Someone you identify with. It's a short person. Yeah. Lizard skin, but tiny. So it obviously escaping. Yeah. That's pretty apparent what's happening. I know that I can't touch him, but I do know that away. I have pure lights. Oh, so potions. if he hits the ground, yeah. you're going to be ready to exactly. run up and... So, do you want to go ahead in that direction, at least? Yeah, I'm going to walk up, I'm going to lay my bow down, and I'm going to cry, and I'm going to ask for them to, in Sylvan, to please not hurt us. Okay, so like monkey talk. You're going to like try... Yeah. You're going to go back to, like, maybe they understand monkey talk. Who knows? Maybe I'll do some... Yeah, it's yeah could, could hurt. And, right. I, and I'm going to I'm gonna do my basic aerokinesis to make a, just a cool breeze blow on him as he's falling to his death, because I don't think I can actually stop Unless you don't have enough power? Yeah, but... You don't have enough power to it'll, affect it'll, arrows or people? Like, yeah, not yet. Yeah. But yeah. enough to, like, see, like, the sweat isn't as bad. You're yeah, yeah. sweaty. Yeah, he's going to feel, feel great. A cool breeze happens. I'll just roll yours and diplomacy, I guess, to try to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. With your Sylvan and Monk... I'll, uh, you know, take into account the fact that you're speaking monkey language. That's a five. Racist. Yeah. <laughs> this guy comes out of the woods just screeching like a monkey. Race. They're insulted now. So yeah, all you do is piss them off by, oh, you think we talk like, mo oh, we're monkeys now. <laughs> so we talk like And we also don't, aren't holding our weapons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you laid down your weapons and have walked forward I and have just insulted people. Can I use an anti-hero point to make him fall on a monkey person? What I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna let that happen. Like as he's going down, he's like hits a guy on the tree, like firing a bow and arrow. He'll like drop his. It'll make the whole like comedic thing happen because it's anti-hero point. I, I was figured I'd use the monkey person as a, a method, a means to cushion his fall. <laughs> so what he'll do is he'll take the damage you're doing now, and then he'll take more damage once they hit the ground. So roll a d8 plus your strength. I'll let that be the damage of just his falling body. Okay, good damage. <laughs> It's gonna die. It's definitely at least half of his, well, probably a little more than half of his uh, HP. And he's gonna fall and take 26 damage, which will probably kill him, and he will break Goon's fall. I'll let that negate Goon's damage by 13. So now you only take 13 damage when you hit the ground, Goon, because you have this cushion beneath you because of that okay. anti hero point. After rain comes, the monkey's firing on you guys, though, and they get to fire two times on everyone. And I'm gonna do three on Vic and Iggy since I'm not gonna fire on Goon yet. So Vic, I got a 12 plus 3 is 15 versus your AC. Oh, that's a hit? That's uh, 8 damage. Jeez. Of, of oh, arrow. Right in the neck or something. I rolled my dice, but I feel like it's a neck shot. I rolled chest. But we'll say high chest, like near neck. I'll, I'll roll twice on you, Lilith, you're next. I got a 12 versus your AC. And a 12 versus your AC. Yes. So two misses. Arrows Ooh. come somewhere near you, but you will have witnessed Vic getting slammed with arrows. I will now roll a little goon. I won't roll on you yet. I will roll twice on Iggy, though. I got a 20 not natural. Parts, yeah. Seven damage. And then I got a eight, not eight total. Yeah, okay, cool. That's a miss, yeah, hopefully. Miss. And then I'll roll on rain one time. I got a seven, which is probably a miss. I yeah, big no. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's more of a Narns are being alerted. Vic Von Glotz, your turn. I'm gonna get a beer, though, so, you know, don't say anything that I have to hear for, like, 12 seconds, but do talk if you want to. I mean, I'm unconscious. Yeah, you're, you're, you're knocked the fuck out, dog. Oh, that's right, I forgot. <laughs> Because you are knocked the fuck out, roll me a constant. But it's an arrow. Roll me a constitution check to make sure you're not like bleeding out or anything. If you beat a ten, I'll say you're not bleeding out. It's just like an arrow in you. Oh yeah, I got a sixteen. All right, so there's an arrow in you, but you're not. I won't make you bleed every round or anything. You're just down. I'll let that be your stabilizing roll, basically. So no, I have one hit point. We'll find out in a moment. So you got, we both have pure lights. You're at zero. You can roll a fortitude save to wake him enough to, you know, take one action or another, crawl or standard. If this one round I'll allow, then you will pass out. You do get one round of, like, struggle, though. Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, pull a potion and uh, pop the cork off with my teeth and drink a cure light wound. It's a very dramatic scene. We get some close-ups. We can see the bottle in your lips, and it's like it's like spilling in your face, and you're just trying to get some of it in your mouth. Uh, four HP. All right, so oh, you can move around again. I would like to scream, fuck! <laughs> Next comes Lilith. I'll uh, snatch up my axe, plant myself in front of uh, Vic, and I will ready an action to hopefully swipe at any arrow that comes my way with my great axe. All right, since defensive. I, I'm a dummy paladin that doesn't have a fucking shield. So if oh, someone does okay. fire at you, what will happen is uh, I'll let you roll to so attack against that yeah. attack, and then if yeah, you can hit it and block, Reflex save block or at least one. Maybe. Yeah. You hit the arrow. Um, and then I'd also uh, yell out, grab the little lizard person. 
It was filled down, yeah. Yeah. Obviously some sort of escapee. And, uh, you know, I'll be like, right, little, little, uh, little lizard person, squishy sorcerer, find cover. Uh, I, I got, I've got you. We, uh, you haven't landed yet, though. So far, you've only fallen, fallen 20 out of 120 feet. You have uh, probably another 10 rounds to the ground. It's like a minute. It's a long fall, apparently. Oh, um, damn. That's how the, the math works out. Uh, how would it involve to attempt to surf? Nice. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a fly check, I feel like. Or ride? I think fly is better because you're in the air. I would like to automatically fail a second fly check. Oh, okay. You try to fly him, but it doesn't work. I don't want to say that it flips you over and puts you underneath because that'll undo all the, the good that anti-hero point did. But it's definitely like you have the bottom of it and you're like climbing on it and nothing's happening. You make it seem like you might land underneath. It starts spinning and now you're like on top and on bottom. So to everyone viewing it, it looks like you might land on bottom. Because the anti-hero point, I won't let that happen because what's the point of spinning the anti-hero point if I'm going to take away what it does? It looks like you might land underneath Beneath the the, the Venarin currently. So uh, I, I failed in an embarrassing way. Yeah, yeah, it looks funny for sure. It looks like it might go horribly wrong, and the body will land on top of you. Ignatius, um, how far is the Venarin that's gonna be? He's at least 120 feet away, and it's probably he's got like a, he's, you see him falling from up high. You've got like 60 seconds to lose the ground, but he's like. Coming down slowly with the body underneath, okay. and now he's like tumbling in a circle. I get hit from here. Yeah, I guess I'm. I'm gonna summon Juji just so I got a little backup. Pikachu. Yeah. Is that? Pika, I, Pika. I want to pick up my bow. I think I hear light right now. Can I do that? Do I if you got it in your bag, that's a move. You haven't used your move yet, so as long as you you have six uh, seconds to dig around your bag and grab it for sure. Yeah. I'm just gonna gather power. Yeah. For now. Start like zapping yeah. up static energy around yeah. you. Yeah. Collecting. Do the Mega Man thing. Yeah. Some, some you hold down the A button long yeah. enough to let <laughs> After Iggy comes rain. Is there any monkey person nearby that I could strangle to death? Rip out their eyes. Like Most that. of them are way up trees, at least like 100, 120 feet away from you, so it would probably take more than one turn to get where they are. None of them are down on the ground with you or like within melee range currently. Is there, yeah, man, I, we can't sit here for a full minute. That's six rounds, that's six attacks. Nobody's going to survive that level one. I guess I could grab a potion and feed it to Vic Von Claude as my standard improve. Yeah, Vic Von Claude's close enough for you to get to him and pull out a potion from your pack and, and give him some HP. I don't HP. think I have one. Did I have one? I was going to just steal one. Do you one. have one? Well, that, uh, you can use your move to search through his bag, but that would just be now we have to ask the question of whether or not you have one. So either you're wasting a turn looking through his bag for one and there's not one there, or you're looking and Vic confirms there's one in your bag. Vic, do you have a potion in your bag? Yeah. Okay, then. One of the potions in your bag is now no longer in your bag. I scream at rain. You owe me ten times the value of that. <laughs> and he tries to pour it down your throat, even though you're awake. Wait, no, I'm going to, while he's saying, he says fuck, I'm going to stamp it down his throat. <laughs> you're going to take this potion whether or not you like it. I got three. All right, three more HP, and of course, an empty, an empty uh, potion jar. Stick that back in your bag if you like. Rain's giving you more HP. After rain comes my um, monkeys. We're now firing three times per three on Vic. I got a seven on Vic, which is too low. Got a fourteen on Vic. That is a match. Plus match. You can roll reflex save for half. Do I get to block one of those? Oh, I'm you can, this, you can block this one if you want. Yeah, this is my Roll on a tag versus what I roll. Anything higher than 13, I'll swap the arrow away. I got a 12. Alright. Next comes down right behind the feather. You might even like hit the end of it, but it still strikes Vic Von Claude for seven damage. Right in your right leg. Unconscious again. God damn it. <laughs> roll a constitution save to see if you're bleeding. Or roll a, one. A, a one? Minus one per turn unless someone heals you um, for the time being. But not right next turn, of course. Minus one for bleeding. That is a really lucky arrow considering I've got two people around me. Yeah. <laughs> and right in the vein, somehow. And it like, went past an axe even. That was the crazy part. Someone like swung an axe at it and still got past that. Um, I rolled a seven, too low, and a twelve. A twelve was for... Ugh. Uh, I get three. Thirteen. Miss. Seventeen. Miss. Goon, you haven't hit the ground yet. So there's the three that would go to you, I'll distribute between Lilith and Iggy. I'll do one on Lilith, two on Iggy. Nat 20 on Lilith. Ten damage to right. that arrow. In your head. <laughs> <laughs> right in the mohawk. Yeah. <laughs> right in the mohawk. Right in the mohawk. <laughs> uh, Iggy, I get three on you. I got a nine on Iggy. Business. I got a 14 on Iggy. Twelve on Iggy. I get one more because of the goon thing. Seven on Iggy. All misses. His arrow's all around. Don't... Luckily, you're a tiny guy. That's yeah. a bit of a being. I know you're so tiny, like hairs go over your little tiny head. Rain, we'll do four on you. That way I don't have to do an extra one on him. Do five on Iggy. I got a nine on Rain, which is a miss, I'm sure. I got a set, oh, 18 on Rain. I got a 13 on Rain. 
Last one, I got a 13 on Rain. Luckily, Rain's adept at dodging arrows. His uncle used to hit him a lot, and so he's really good at dodging being hit. The yeah, it's true. All the abuse finally pays off. That's all my Venarans, so now we're back to Vit. Alright, I guess time to roll another constitution check to continue to be alive. If you uh, roll a successful, we can stop the bleeding even. It'll just like bleed out the one turn. Uh, I rolled an 11. So. Alright, so you take minus one for the bleed. Cool, so I have a negative one hit point. Definitely unconscious. Not dead though. All right. Well, I guess I will put my uh, axe uh, on my on my back sheets or whatever I've got. Yeah, so like I, have free, I, need free, I need free I free hands. I am going to uh, sheath my axe and grab Vic and pull him to cover because he's a squishy little sorcerer and also I'm pretty hurt too. Yeah. 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 Roll me a strength that could drag him away. Okay. Probably like 380 pounds. You're a big guy. Yeah. yeah. You're a, for a human. You're a lot, and you have a lot of armor and stuff on you. You got you have things. Like six eight. Right? You carry a lot. Yeah. yeah. Like you're a big guy point. that carries a lot of things. So there's almost no way I'm gonna be able to. You can try. So the roll yeah, to try. I got a 16. So um, instead of dragging them 30 feet, 15, 15 feet, feet to yeah. maybe behind a tree. And like, and really, you're like, really like, like two like inches at a time. It's like struggle dragging. It's not pleasant. This is gonna wear you out. This is hard. Yeah. But I'll say you can still move. It's just task. Just Hopefully like move time. behind a boulder or a tree. Roll me a stealth to do that, just to get you guys behind something. Uh, 18. If your AC is lower than 18, next round you and Vic can both consider that your AC whenever I shoot at you. It is not. If it's not, keep your regular AC. But if it is, you have that cover of 18 yeah. to... Cool. That goes for both of you. Yeah, it's good for yeah. Vic. Yeah. It's good for Vic he's unconscious, yeah. yeah. So he's prone, he's all the negative. Also, hopefully they will stop shooting at him now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They don't care. They mm-hmm. shoot. Mm-hmm. Just arrows just coming Hand cushions, yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. After Lilith comes Goon, who's still falling. Uh, but this is another s- six seconds of falling, so now you're nine rounds away from the ground. Uh, so yeah, you're just tumbling down. But you can do things up in the air. You can. You got your, your stuff with you. You can, you know, do things if you feel necessary. We'll say you probably don't even have a pack. Whatever your pack consists of is whatever you're stealing from this guy as you fall. So, like, you've probably already picked out your pack pre-game. But whatever's in it is whatever you're, like, grabbing from this guy. So you're grabbing a pack from him. So we'll pretend, like, whatever you own is coming from that. As you're okay. falling, you grab this stuff and... Ah. You have nine so, times six seconds. Fifty-four seconds. June has seen uh, the folly, his fate, in his great crisis of faith. He is going to stop trying to fly and is going to try to rearrange himself into a better falling position. Guy cushioning my... Because right now you guys are spinning out of control. You want to, like, maintain on top. You grabbed his stuff, but you want him below you. Uh, maybe, like, a, a reflex save, and that'll have the damage again coming down if you do that right now. That's, uh, you know, that's probably the best way to do it from here. Okay. So at this point, I think you're at 13 damage if you fall. If you half it again, we'll say that's 7. You roll above 15 reflex. I did not. Well, then it's still 13 damage if you fall. After Goon comes Iggy. How far away from me? They're pretty close. Probably within 30, 40 feet. You can get we, to them in this Yeah, time. we only moved 15. Right. You and I are saying we're close to each other. All right. Well, I'm going to blast off a zap. Because I, uh, I'm going to do a long distance infusion. Beep, beep. Yeah, at the guy that's on the ground. You powered up, so you Yeah, know. oh yeah, so I can do 120 feet this round. Uh, well, can I zap anyone right. up top? Or is yeah, it you can far? shoot. Well, yeah, 120 feet? Yeah. 120, yeah, you can, get, you yeah, can shoot sure. someone, yeah. I'll take a, I'll take a oh, shot, yeah. yeah. yeah why not? If they're shooting us with arrows, yeah, then. Fuck, fuck you yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm allowed. Right. That's a good range. All right. And I think you, should, you can shoot them. 18 plus. Oh, that's a hit. Yeah. He plays plus anything. The AC is 18, so plus. Plus anything will connect. One. Still damaged. So oh, no, nothing. And then I'm gonna go back to hang out with uh, with them. As so a try to like regroup. Yeah. With a, as a free action, can I give them two health potions? You have them on your. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So as a free action, as a as a move, because it's in your bag. On your, well, it's on your belt loop. If it's on your belt loop, you yeah. can free action one. If it's in your bag, it takes a move to get it out. Okay. Well, uh, for next round, I'll be. You can start digging around. Yeah, I'm gonna be going. You're to like looking your bag to get them. All right. The potions. You start yeah. looking in your bag. Yeah. After Iggy comes rain, you see uh, Iggy digging in his bag. You see, so like I think Iggy, Vic, and Lil are all clumped together right now. Behind the rock. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you guys are all hiding on the same tree or rock or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You guys have some. What was the stealthy roll? 18? 18. If 18 is higher than your AC, use that this next round. Cool. If not, use your AC, but nah. you guys have some cover, you're all together. Rain, you're not with them, but it's your turn. Can I get further away to the point where I give them negatives to shoot at me? You can get out of Beyond range. range. 
You could easily like yeah. run out of if you want to like get you know you have to get away from your group. You can run back into the jungle and you can in this turn if you like went your full speed you can get far enough away that their arrows couldn't reach you. You can just get to where the arrows like land away from you. I don't want to get out of it. I would like to stand on the very edge of that range. So That'll that reduce instead of me shooting you one extra time. I'll shoot you with the so next round is four times and instead of yeah. me taking the one time I shoot a goon and adding it to you, I'll keep all those times that uh, your allies hiding behind a rock. So you can decrease the amount of times I shoot at you. That's fine. I don't, you know what? I'll take. I'll, I'll talk from far away so they can they attack me. At the so you want out. to draw some attacks? Do you roll me intimidate no, 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 to no. draw some attacks? I don't want to draw. I just want the same amount and not put it on my. You want eye. even. So you don't want to hide or get too far. You want to remain in range. How about you just join them behind the rock? That's if you want to do that. How about just get in the same area as them? Okay. Uh, well, I, the whole point was to be like just. I, if I needed to, I could walk outside the range. So you want to be within 30 feet of where they're at, maybe still in the same kind of cover, but not, you know, to, to draw arrows away. Maybe not in the same spot, but near them. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's what we'll do then. You're, you're within 30 feet of the group, not behind the same tree or rock, but nearby. You're still behind a bush, but it's not a very big push, and you're a big guy. So, like, you know, you're still sticking out. Um, but yeah. The whole point of it was that if I needed to, I could just... Back and, walk outside the room. and you still can. You're still on the edge, and you're closer to your allies. So we'll say all that stuff happens. But then right, I get cool. to fire on you, everyone four times, except Goon, because he hasn't hit the ground yet, or run away for it to be a target. So because there are four of you, instead of four times, I'll take everyone five times, and but no one will get more than five. No one's going to get a concentration. I got a 22 versus rain. Yeah, that's That's eight damage of arrow. Ow. That hits you right in the right arm. Roll number two out of five. Thirteen versus rain. Miss. Yeah. Uh, Eighteen versus rain. No, sir. That's number three. Number four is a twelve versus rain, also a miss. And then a seven versus rain. Oh, miss. So only that one error got you. That was a good hit. It was a good hit. Ouch. And then I'll roll... Five times against Vic, even though you're unconscious, there's still a rain, like arrows just come raining down on you. Minus one. Okay, here we go. Five times arrows coming at you. I got a 17, so that's obviously a miss either way, because you have at least 18. I got a 18 plus three, which is a 21. That's a hit. Fortunately, you take five damage from that arrow that just so makes it through the barrier of your allies on this rock and tree. Uh, number three is an 18. It's 18 from the, the cover. That's a match, so technically you can't you can't do a reflex save. But I'll let you take half of what I rolled, just because I'm not a total asshole. So three damage from the arrow that barely gets by that. The number four was a 16, which is too low. Number five is a 21. That's a hit. And that one's another six damage. I'm dead. Dead, dead? Oh, yep. Does someone have an anti-hero point or hero I, I point? I got a hero point. All hero right, point. wait. That's what oh, friends man. are for, for ah, the good yeah. times and the bad times. <laughs> Ignatius, what do you do to prevent this arrow from striking your ally and murdering him? I'm gonna do another one of my fart gusts of wind. Yeah, that just... it's just enough. I mean, look, yeah. your wind power usually can't do this, but with a hero point with a plus eight to it, your your gust of wind will blow that arrow away. All the arrow from that, all the damage from that last arrow is not taken, so you're just very unconscious still. Yeah, nine. Five shots on Lilith. Oh, it's a nineteen plus three, twenty-two. That's four damage. Unconscious Lilith, and you still have more arrows coming towards you. I got a 16. That's missed. 15. Missed. A natural 1. A 12, which is too low. I mean, anything below an 18, the, the, the yeah. cover's you know, protecting you, so even if... And then a 12... Or no, sorry, 9. That's a 6 on a 9. Miss. Goon, you've been the ground jet. Iggy, I rolled a natural 20 on you from my first one, though. I rolled pretty low, though, so that's 4 damage, Iggy. So you're still awake, I assume? Hopefully. Yeah. All right. So four, four more shots coming at you though, but then I got a five, so a miss. Got a nine, that's probably that's anything below an eighteen right now. Uh, a six miss, six miss. Number five. Oh, that one's a twenty-two though. All right, that's four damage. Okay, well, one hit point. Vic, you're unconscious, but it's your turn. Yeah, I'll roll a four to save to stop bleeding. Uh, I rolled a sixteen. That's enough. So you can stabilize where you're at. Uh, after Vic comes, Lilith. I'm roll a fortitude to... Also stop unconscious to stop your bleeding. Yep, still unconscious. Uh, fortitude to constitution, but fortitude is probably higher since it's conscious. Yeah, it's 19. You can stop bleeding, so you can stabilize where you are. You won't lose any more blood. You know, so those arrows are in your good. Lilith, after Lilith comes Goon, who is now seven rounds away from hitting the ground, but still able to do stuff as you're falling, if you like. Yes, I would like in place a trap Ooh. on the gentleman who I am attached to. I'll allow it. Maybe survival is what we need to, like, install a trap in the air. Uh, Maybe this guy fall on something sharp, basically. It's a supernatural ability. SU, okay, yeah, yeah, you can just do that. You grab some stuff out of the bag, you grab all the sharp things out of this guy's backpack, and, like, make sure he's gonna fall on them. I have the 
dirty trick trap. It allows me to do a dirty trick combat maneuver and set it as a trap. So CMB uh, is what the we have to roll for that then? Yes. Level plus wisdom bonus two, so three. Do that plus seven d6 for falling. So you're gonna fall. They're gonna fall on your trap. I, and I also have the ability to do a dirty trick maneuver. So if if this doesn't kill the guy, which it probably will, but if he wakes up, he's gonna be like dazzled or something, or. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I I would like to do entangle. So like midair, you're tying this guy up basically. Yes. You're cre- you're creating a trap where he's gonna fall on some spikes and be tied up. Yes. Yeah, okay, as you're falling, you're doing this. You're grabbing yourself out of his bag and improvising a trap. Mag- you MacGyver that shit. You grab some rubber bands and somehow make a trap out of it. That would be 20 damage. So he's minus 7. He's very unconscious, near death, as you guys, you know, once you guys hit the ground. The trap will activate when you hit the ground, but he'll be wrapped up and near death when you guys hit the ground. Tune in next time for more Constant Chronicle Badig. of Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Dinner Theater was sponsored by our fans and friends on Patreon. Donate today. Keep Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Dinner Theater alive.